good morning. I'm feeling especially tired. And I think that's because I have toothpaste all over my shirt. No, I think that's because we are going on vacation. This weekend, just a quick four day trip to Portland. So I just have a little bit of senioritis. But today is actually Tuesday. It was Memorial Day this week, so I had an extra day in my weekend. Now we're getting back to it. So I'm gonna take you along with my day and we're actually gonna talk about what I eat in a day videos. There are so many different variations and levels to these videos. So throughout the day, I'm gonna be sharing kind of like the pros and the cons or like the, the red and the green flags to look out for in this different type of content. I wanna first say though that this type of content isn't inherently bad. Like most things I talk about, it's not black or white. Like what I eat in a day videos are bad, don't ever watch them. There's levels and there's multitudes to it. I simply hope to give you some tools today to help make you a more critical thinker as you're consuming this type of content because there are unfortunately some very like sneaky ways that people can make you think things are true without them being true. So uh, that's what we're gonna talk about today. As we go through all of that, I, I'm gonna take you through what I eat in a day for kind of no other purpose than like it ties in nicely with the videos. And as we get to each meal, we'll kind of talk about a new topic. Right now it's about 7 a.m. I have a class to teach virtually at eight and I actually don't have any clients book today, which is very bizarre. But we're just gonna roll with it because I'm really tired. Today we'll probably be spent doing a lot of admin work and I also have to go to the gym. So uh, that's what you can expect in this video. I'm gonna keep getting ready for class and we'll just kind of catch back up later. You find your nice strong hinge. Just row that weight up. All right, so here's the breakfast, which I think I already showed you. This is just baked oatmeal. So I just made this on Sunday. I had some cottage cheese for some added protein, but I'm gonna eat this real quick and then we'll talk about some red flags with what I eat in the day videos. This is, uh, this is gonna be a hard video to get through. I am feeling incredibly unmotivated. Okay, so some of the red flags to look out for when you're watching what I eat in a day videos. Number one is the body check at the beginning. Extra points if their head is cut off. So the reason I have an issue with this is because it is subconsciously putting into the viewer's brain, hey, if you eat like me, you will look like this, or I got this body because I eat like this. And unfortunately, that's just simply not how it works, my friend. Now, I'm not saying that someone's nutrition habits and workout routine doesn't play any part in how someone looks, but we have to remember that genetics are such a huge factor in this. And I've said it a thousand times, but I don't want you to feel discouraged when I say things like that. Like your genetics will determine how you look. Your genetics are going to severely influence the way that you look, but then it's like all the things that you do habitually, like your movement, like your nutrition, like your sleep, like those are all of the things that kind of fine tune it, right? So when someone shows you a body shot at the beginning of a What I Eat In A Day video, just know that you're looking at someone's genetic makeup as well as their habits. But that does not mean that those habits will make you have their genetic makeup. Okay, the next red flag I want you to look out for is when creators will literally say, I ate X, Y, and Z to get this result. And again, in a similar vein, it's very misleading because it's like, well, if I ate this way and got this result, I'm sharing it with you because then you'll eat this way and get this result. So we already understand why that's not true, right? But the, the reason why I wanna point this one out as like a completely different thing to look out for is because when challenged on this, 99% of the time, they'll be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just sharing my experience. I'm not telling anybody else to eat this way or that anybody else will look like this. And that's fine if that's your intent, but instead of jumping to the defense and being like, you're attacking me, I would recommend that people instead step back and go, okay, I have this intent, right? Of what message I wanna share. Maybe they wanna inspire you to eat better, to help fuel your body and reach an aesthetic goal, right? And maybe they're hoping that this is inspiration for you. So that's the intent. But if the impact is harmful, meaning it's misleading, meaning it is spreading misinformation of, you know, just how the body works. Well, then we have to step back as a creator and go, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. It's obviously not working. So what do I have to change, right? And that's the issue you see with so much of this content online. It's very clickbaity. When people are called out about it, I see very little change and I see very little 
responsibility. It's always like, oh, I'm just sharing my experience or well, this is just the way it is on the internet or this is just what everyone's doing. I'm gonna sound like a boomer right now, but if everyone jumped off a bridge, would you too? Okay, and the final thing I want you to look out for is the ad, the sponsorship, the affiliate link, the, the strategically placed bloom bottle in the corner. Honestly, when I see a bloom canister in a video at this point, I skip it, I dislike it. And here, and here's the thing, I, I obviously don't have an issue with sponsorships, especially if they're like ethically and legally disclosed, because I do them too. But I, I think that, again, we're just trying to use our critical brains here. When you're viewing content like this or content in general, and there is a sponsorship in there, like that person's goal is to sell you on it. And no matter how many times they'll be like, no, I'm just sharing what I enjoy and what I use. It's like, well, you're also getting paid to say that. Or you also have an affiliate link that gets you a kickback. So like, sure, you might enjoy it. And I would hope that creators are only taking sponsorships from brands that they believe in and that they actually enjoy. You know, that's not always the case, but let's say it is. Even if it is, like their goal is still to get you to buy it. So just, again, critical thinking, be aware. I do sponsorships too, so I get it. And rant. All right, I feel like that was a little all over the place. My brain is not totally here today. We're gonna edit class, and then I was supposed to film a bunch of stuff, and we're not going to. Great. Hello. All right, let's chat real quick before I have to devour my lunch. Yes, I'm in pajamas because it's gonna be a pajama and work from the couch slash bed today. Day, today. I picked a great day to film. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I wanna talk about some of the positive things that you should look out for in what I eat in a day video content. <laughs> First and foremost, I want you to look for morally neutral language. So language that talks about addition rather than restriction. Language that doesn't really use good or bad. Maybe looking instead for nutrient dense or colorful. And the reason I really emphasize that is because these are the people who actually give a shit about your relationship with food. If we're just focused on the aesthetic outcome that could potentially happen because of what you're eating, it doesn't necessarily create a great relationship between you and your food. And I'm sure so many people watching this video has experienced some sort of guilt or restriction or worry about what they're eating. Another thing you wanna look for that's like a green flag is balance. So videos that celebrate all food, videos that don't necessarily just rely on clean eating or a perfect day of eating. I think it's really important to remember that all foods fit. It just comes down to like, what are you doing most of the time? And then the last thing to look out for, and I would say this is more like an added bonus, like it's a green flag, but it's not necessary, are people with qualifications. Follow registered dietitians, follow certified nutrition coaches, follow chefs. But yeah, that's just kind of like food for thought. Why are we following Sally Mae influencer who's been sponsored by every supplement under the sun to get our meal ideas? Just saying. Okay, I'm gonna take my lunch break, which I've been trying to give myself, but let's be real, this whole day has turned into a lunch break. Um, this is also turning into a video of showing you that I'm not always super motivated to do all the things. So we're gonna sit here, probably watch a little TV, eat my lunch, and then we're either gonna work here or on the bed, but we're definitely not working at the desk because it's not a desk working type of day. Great. Dinner was delicious. I meal prepped that on Sunday, and it's just protein pasta, shredded rotisserie chicken from Aldi, some asparagus, and pesto. And then I added some cheese on top. So I'm gonna put these dishes away, and we're just gonna kinda like wrap up this video. Obviously today was, oh, you can't see my face. <laughs> Obviously today was like oddly uneventful in terms of work, but hopefully 
we learned a little bit about critical thinking skills. I think in general, when consuming content online, we have to look out for those things that are so black or white. The messaging that this one thing gave me this result. This one way of eating made me look like this. Because not only is that probably not true, it also really, it doesn't apply to you. Like I already said, I don't think that all of this what I eat in a day content is inherently bad. I think a lot of people get inspiration from it. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that our like, our follow, our comment, that's essentially a vote for what we want to see more of. So if you're constantly voting for this unrealistic, misinformed, false information, that's what people are going to make more of. Because again, you hear all of these people say, well, this is just how it is. This is just how the internet is. This is how you have to do things to get noticed. But I prefer to challenge that. <laughs> I prefer to help inform people so that we can stop voting for this type of content and make it content that supports our mental health a lot more. So hopefully this video was informative and interesting. And if there's another topic that you want to talk about, let me know. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos and I will see you all in the next one.